this episode of Bondi Vet, Chris takes on a devil of a patient. I've never heard a grown man make that sound. Six-month-old Oliver is struggling to walk. Why is Andrew so concerned? Unfortunately, if he does have this problem, it's never going to be normal. Is it there? Tim to the rescue of a family held hostage by a deadly intruder. Look, I've got goosebumps, really. A desperate plea for help for little Sam. It's like losing part of family for this. And an orphan lamb has been adopted by a strange mother. <coughs> but now the baby's future is in doubt. I can honestly say I've never, ever seen anything like this in my entire veterinary career. <coughs> you make my world a better place. <laughs> 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 Get you walking again soon. That's good. Timmy, g'day. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Mate, you've got a school bag. Of course, you've got a school bag. I'm guessing what's in there isn't for kids, though. Nah, I've got a treat for you today. <laughs> Tim Faulkner from the Australian Reptile Park has made a dash to the Bondi Clinic with a very special six-month-old patient. And there he is. Lewis is in a bit of strife. <laughs> Along for the ride is Lewis's twin sister, Luna. So did you see what happened or do you know what happened to him? Basically, they got up to a bit of mischief just running around and, and Lewis comes back and his leg is, you know, visibly sore. And it could be a bite, it could be a, a, a fall, it could be some sort of injury through play. Yeah, yeah definitely playing. Like, yeah. it hasn't stopped him, he's still nuts. Wait, can you tell us what happened? Yeah, the two of you. The rest will get a bit out of control, is it? Huh? I hate to say, it looks like you can't on second best. Ah, uh, it, it's just all one big yawn, is it? First, Chris needs to remove Tim's amateur handiwork. He stuck it on. First one I put on, he just tore it off, ripped it straight off. So I'm trying to move this leg as, as little as possible, but he's just making these little grunting sounds. Yeah. They give so little away, yeah. but the little grunting sound he's making, it's bothering him. Yeah. Lewis right now is whimpering from time to time. He's really guarding that leg. He's trying to hide it from me. So if it's worrying him, then it's really worrying me. An X-ray will tell Chris just how serious the injury is. Oh, don't do that. But Lewis is not planning to make it easy. That's the cue. But it's for, it's for comfort, right? Oh, it's just security. Yeah, security. They bite on the Feels mum. that way. Your mum. Yeah. Oh. oh. Okay, Bubba. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Linda and her two daughters, Ashley and Lauren, have rushed in with six-year-old Sam. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sammy. Overnight, the miniature dash hound has suddenly become weak and can barely walk. It was really, really upsetting. I just wanted to help him and take all the pain away from him. He's like part of the family, so... If it's like losing part of the family for this. Hello, I'm Lisa. Hi. Hi. Lisa, is this Sam? Yes. Hello, Sam. Hi, honey. Come through. We had a call that Sam's coming in with difficulty walking and he's a dachshund, so automatically all of us assume it's a spinal problem. When did you first notice that something was wrong? Last night. Normally he jumps on the couch after mm -hmm. dinner, but he just couldn't jump He up. was trying to, but just couldn't, just couldn't do, do it. it. Why don't you pop him on the ground for me? Come here, Sam. Come here, Sammy. Yeah, he's very not himself. So he's wobbly in the back legs there. He's walking like he's drunk. Sam's probably got a degenerative disc disease, which can happen in this breed. A dog with disc disease can be completely normal one day and the next day be screaming in pain, paralysed, unable to walk and needing emergency surgery. It can happen like that. 
This, this is normal, this, right? This means he likes you, he's just feeling safe. Oh. oh. Lewis, the six-month-old Tasmanian devil, is about to have his injured leg x-rayed. The youngster has become quite attached to Chris. Oh. <laughs> I've never heard a grown man make that sound. He's a dog, all right? Fortunately, okay. those baby teeth are not doing too much damage just yet. Pop. Good boy. He's being good, he's not struggling. Mm. X-ray. And I can see this straight away, mate. It's not great news. He does actually have a fracture there. Yeah. If we do nothing about it, then it's really going to limit his life. Yeah. And he just wouldn't be able to breed, wouldn't be able to get around, wouldn't be able to survive. Yeah. I'm a little bit in awe of him, how much he's been able to get around. Yeah. And put up with that. Yeah. I cringed when I, I saw the X-ray, and I think, you know, what what spirit these little devils have got. Hey, right, Lewis. Huh? Broken leg, buddy. I hate to say it. I'm gonna fix it though. You know, I've done that exact injury. Same leg. You're kidding. Me. Same bone. Do you know how I did it? Yeah. Tell me. On a dance floor. Boogie moves. Yeah. Oh no. What move? A uh, running. Inverted worm. <laughs> Landed and cracked the bone there. Maybe that's what Lewis did. Maybe. You wanna come clean, Lewis? You're showing off to your sister. I can't use a cast in this leg for the simple fact that even if it's on for four weeks, six weeks, his leg will probably go a full centimetre in that time. If there's a cast over that bone, the bone won't grow. So he'll have one leg shorter than the other. But what we need to do is give him some sort of splint that is strong enough to stop that bone from moving, but still flexible enough that the bone can grow within it. I'm amazed at how good he's been. He's been incredible. This advice I know you won't listen to, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Just go easy. Take life slowly. Let's not panic, let's just enjoy our youth in the slow lane, just for a few weeks. Is that okay? It'll make a big difference. Hmm? What we really need from him is essentially the impossible, for him to stay quiet. Yeah. This bandage will mean that he really stays off the leg a lot, but he's still going to try to push his limits because that's what devils do. Yeah. Four weeks maybe, because he's so young, yeah. could be enough. But just got to stay off it. Yeah. For most pets that I see in here, if their leg isn't 100%, it doesn't really matter. They can get around, even if they have a slight limp. For a Tassie devil like Lewis, his leg needs to be 100% because in the future, he's going to go and essentially live in the wild. He has to survive there, but also he has to breed there. On three legs, he just can't do that. Look, I'm just impressed that two Tassie devils visited here and the yeah. only person that really got a bite was, was me. Yeah. No I dogs injured, no cats, no nurses. Yeah. No one was harmed in the filming of this segment apart from really me. <laughs> At SASH, emergency vet Lisa Chimes is trying to work out why Sam the Dash Hound has suddenly become terribly weak and is struggling to walk. Hey, Sammy. Look, Sam's signs are pretty vague. I mean, he's walking with a wobbly gait, but when I put him up on the table and have a feel of his spine, I'm not really finding any obvious areas of pain. He's not screaming. Stand up for me. If it's not a spinal issue, a tick bite could be the answer. I mean, the fact that he can stand and walk is a good sign, but the fact mm. that it's happened so quickly is not such a good sign. While Sam's signs could be suggestive of a tick, we can't find a tick, we can't find a tick crater, and looking at him right now, I cannot reliably say 100% that he's got a tick. It's okay, it's okay. What we really need to do is keep him in hospital, monitor him closely, make sure he doesn't get any worse, because if he does, he might need surgery. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. I knew it was going to be hard. I just hate it when I hear him, like, crying. So. Just 
don't want to leave him here, even though I know he has to. They've got tears in their eyes. They absolutely adore Sam. He's the little baby. They're terrified that things are going to get worse. I'm in the Barossa Valley in South Australia now. Most people when they come here take some time out and sample some of the region's finest, but none of that for me. I'm here to see a little lamb who's in a bit of trouble. Take a look at this. That is amazing. You know this is this is slightly strange, don't you? Well, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's amazing. So, how are you? Yeah, it's Julie, good. isn't it? Yeah, hi, Chris. I'm Chris, how are you? And you must be Zoe. Hello. This is Lemmy, and she's five weeks old now. Next day, Chris is meeting up with Julie. She's concerned about Lammy, a little orphan that has formed an unusual relationship with Zoe, the Dalmatian. Well, I've got a bit confusing, isn't it? No, thank you. Yes. I'm not. Just, just checking her out, that's all. How old was she when Mum walked away? I think she would have been about half an hour old. Really? Mm. Was that soon? Mm. The first animal that she saw was the dog. <laughs> so she thought that was her mother. She literally joined the dots? Yes, yes. And, and went, OK, that must be Mum. And I just thought it was so very unusual to see a spotted lamb. It just looked like a Dalmatian puppy to me. I can honestly say I've never, ever seen anything like this in my entire veterinary career. This is so bizarre, yet so incredibly fascinating at the same time. Zoe happened to be in season at the exact moment that Lammy was abandoned. So with Zoe having all those hormones like progesterone in the system, screaming out for her to become a mother, all of a sudden Lammy appeared and Zoe could become a mother. We're talking about one in 10,000 chances here combining and producing this incredible situation. The one worry I've got is that she never suckled from her mother. So what I wouldn't mind doing is just having a bit of a look over her now, just to see how healthy she is, and from there, just make sure that everything's going along okay. When a lamb's born, the mother's udder is full of something we call colostrum, which is a milk that's really rich in fat, high in energy, but most importantly, it's got a lot of antibodies in it. And those antibodies go straight into the lamb the moment this milk is drunk and provide immediate protection. And that protection lasts for weeks and months. Without it, she just does not have any sort of immunity. The first little infection that comes along, it could kill her. Hey Sam, how are you feeling today? At Sash, Lisa is monitoring Sam constantly. The miserable dash hound has been struck down by a mystery illness, which is progressively paralysing his body. Good boy, Sammy. So Sam came in with a possible spinal problem. He had some mild back pain. He was a little bit wobbly in his back legs. You're not very sore. Hmm? What's going on? He certainly hasn't got any pain anymore, but I'm worried about this general weakness that we're dealing with something else other than a spinal problem. Good boy, Sam. Let's see if you can do this. Oh, that's pretty hopeless, Sam. What's going on? So I'm just doing some postural tests on Sam, just seeing if he can hop on two legs at a time, and normal dogs should be able to if you support the other legs. But when I do that with Sam, he's really weak. He does a couple of hops and then just falls over. It's really showing me a big deterioration. I think disc disease is much less likely in Sam's case. Can you come here? Come in, Sam. Sam. The possible causes are he's either got a tick, he might have a disease causing weakness all over his body because he's got a tumour somewhere else. And then there is this condition that we do see pretty commonly in dogs. It happens for no reason. It's called polyradiculoneuritis. It's a fancy name for a disease where they get generalised weakness all over their body, kind of like motor neuron disease. It's not very good, hey? A 
Australian Reptile Park General Manager Tim Faulkner is on his way to help a family under siege from Australia's deadliest spider. Hello? Funnel web rescue! Oh, Tim, that was quick. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Jodie. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. How are you? Good, thank you. Well, not really. We've got a funnel web in the house. Funnel webs kill, and people know that, so it's a little bit terrifying when you've got one in your backyard, let alone in your house. Tony, did you see where it went? Um, I think it went under the fridge or behind the CD racks. I don't know how long this spider's been here. I've got goosebumps. Really, it's quite scary, actually. What did it look like? It was big and black. Oh, you're pretty brave in here. I can notice you got oh, your feet I'm, up. I'm up now. You're up. <laughs> I'm going to have a look. Ooh, I've got the heebie-jeebies. Jody knows firsthand how dangerous these spiders can be. My husband stomped on one and killed it. And it actually um, didn't bite him at all, but within an hour he was sweating and he was green. And, oh, it just gives me the goosebumps because he was so unwell. Mm. There's one part there I can't see behind. Be careful. <sighs> so what I need is a very generous sheep who's actually going to give a donation of some blood. And you'll catch it? An attempt to catch it. That's the plan. Okay. Chris is in the Barossa Valley working on a left field idea on how to protect five week old Lammy from disease. <coughs> An orphan from birth, she was unable to suckle from her mum and never received life saving antibodies. The plan is that we're going to find a ewe, a mother sheep that has a lamb. Now, what makes her special is that she has a lot of antibodies in her system right now. If we then draw out some blood and let that blood settle, I can actually take the antibodies out of that blood and inject them straight into Lammy. Lammy's at a disadvantage. In the future, if she was to get an infection, she has no resistance to fight that. So any assistance that Chris can give her with this blood procedure, I'm really happy to go along with it. Right. This is the bit you're excited about, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to watch you. Watch and learn. It's a good plan. It's a great plan. But it's a plan that has a small hitch in that I need to catch the sheep to get that blood sample. Not going to be easy. So, Chris, you're looking for the one on the left, that little one, that little innocent looking sheep. And that's her lamb on the ground in front of her. She looks so slow. She was the last one to lamb, so she would have the freshest amount of milk in her. Let's not try to sugarcoat it. It wasn't pretty. She was too speedy. It takes a real man to say that, but I was beaten by a mother sheep with a lamb. The lamb probably beat me as well when it's all said and done. Sash, Angel has arrived with her two dogs, Oliver and Jasmine. What a good girl. But it's six month old Oliver that Angel is worried about. Oliver's got a lame left front leg, which has persisted and is getting worse. Hi, Angel. Hi, Andrew. What's with Ollie? Um, Ollie's got a, a limp on his left side. How long has he been like that? About three weeks. So he wasn't lame before that? No. Get you to trot him down there for sure. me. Sure. Hey, Jess. Specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski has been treating Angel's pets for years. Just a bit quicker. OK. Left four. We can do that. Right. So not had any other lamenesses? No. no Good boy. You all right? Yeah. Hey, no. As uh, soon as you get to that elbow and put a little bit of pressure on the inside part of it, he's not happy. He's pulling away and having a bit of a gnaw at my hand. He's certainly sore on that point. I guess, dog of his breed and age, I think we have to think of something like um, elbow dysplasia, um, which I guess you're a little familiar with. Too given familiar. I don't want Harley. to dog with elbow no. dysplasia. <laughs> For Angel, this diagnosis brings back a lot of painful memories. I would really hope that it's not elbow dysplasia. I suppose that's the worst scenario. My last one had lots of dysplasia and he had a lot of health issues. 
Elbow dysplasia is a disease where the, the elbow joint doesn't quite fit together properly and puts pressure in the wrong spot. And as a result of that, we tend to get fragments of bone coming off, or even little fractures, if you like. That's the last thing we want to let Ollie get to. I think really the next step is we need to do a CT scan. And it's quite sensitive at detecting whether he's got a little bone chip or there's a big flap of bone. I guess the other thing is, unfortunately, if he does have this problem, he's never going to be normal. I just hope that whatever it is, they can fix it very quickly and he can get on with his puppy life. It's so awful for him to be so young and have to go through this. So, yeah, it's, it's very upsetting. Is it there? We should be able to find him. Tim is continuing his search for a lethal funnel web spider. The intruder is terrifying Jody and her two daughters. Any dark corner is where he's going to be because it's daylight now, they're nocturnal, so it's all the dark spots that I look. If he's not under the fridge or cupboard, perhaps he's behind the fish tank. I see him. Finally, he spots the deadly spider. He's in here. <laughs> be careful. I'm always aware of the fact that you can't get complacent. I always like to remind myself, if I was a carpenter, sooner or later I'm going to hit myself on the finger with a hammer. That can't happen with a funnel web spider. You're dead. At the moment, he thinks he's hidden. So he's just sitting there, crouched. But what we'll expect here in a second is, and why they're famous, as soon as I move this, he's going to rear up. Put his fangs up, droplets of venom on the end, ready to bite. Come on, mate. Oh, see so that he just bit the tongs. And I can actually feel that fang, ting, it hits. That's an incredible amount of force for a tiny little spider. Come on, little buddy. In you go. Good spider. There we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's definitely a Sydney funnel web spider and a male. There he is. Thank you so much. That's OK. For catching our little friend. Yeah, little friend. Thank gosh that Tim was able to locate the funnel web. I'm really relieved. I was so concerned for the children after what had happened to my husband a few years ago. Finding another one in the house was quite frightening. We can take him back now and save some lives. That's excellent. This is only the beginning for the spider because now really he goes into a luxurious resort. He gets his self-contained little cabin. He gets a cricket once a week and we get to milk him and extract that venom that saves lives. We're four. We're okay. At SASH, six month old Oliver's CT scan is underway. How far down do you want I'll get his shoulders in as well. Specialist surgeon Andrew Marchevsky is worried the limping Labrador is suffering from elbow dysplasia. If he's got elbow dysplasia and he's got a big chunk of bone sitting there or a crack, and we don't do anything about it, he'll go on and get really nasty arthritis, and that can be crippling. Oliver's owner, Angel, and her Doberman, Jasmine, are waiting anxiously in reception for news. No, he's not there. If I had a look at both of his elbows, I can't see any evidence of elbow dysplasia, and that's great. I think even better than that, I can actually find on this a cause of his lameness. So I'll get Angel in and have a bit of a chat and I'll show what we've found. He doesn't have elbow dysplasia. Really? Yeah, no, they're fine. That's the most fantastic no, news he's ever. the cleanest set of elbows in the country. But he's got another disease. That sounds like a bad thing. Yeah. But it's actually a good thing because okay. it explains his lameness. He's got okay. panosteitis. Okay. And all that is, it's sort of like growing pains right. for puppies. It'll go away once he right. hits maturity. It's good news, really. Because okay. he doesn't have arthritis, he's not going to get arthritis. Yeah. So. Excellent. Okay. It's really good. It's really good. Did you miss your mum? Of course you did. <laughs> I'm really glad that he's got to come home, so really glad. So I like my puppies being at home with me, not here, as much as I love Sash. <laughs> come nice on. quick visit. Yes. It's always good. Yes, always good. It's always better than a long visit. Yes. I'll get the door for you. It's the best news I could have come up with for Angel. Yeah, she will do anything for her dogs, I know that. Let's go. 
So to be able to say, it's not elbow dysplasia, it's this, it'll go away, it doesn't get any better really. Ollie, let's go. Come on, girls. In the Barossa Valley, Chris needs to give Lammy an important transfusion of antibodies to boost her immunity. Good girls. But first, he needs to catch a blood donor. Could have told me about that before. <laughs> I told you I had a secret weapon. It's well, called a white bucket. You're smirking at me, getting me to try to tackle these poor, innocent mothers. Go and on you had then. this all... Go on then. I thought I'd let you have an attempt. Hey guys, I know. Come on. Right. This is very generous of you. Now we've finally caught our you. It's a lot like a human donating blood. Ready? Yeah, I've got it. Well done. Okay. First time. <clears throat> He's a good doctor, isn't he? Hey, good girl. So we'll just let gravity take that blood from the jugular vein yes. down the tube into this bag here. And how much are you aiming for to collect? Oh, we'll probably half fill it. Oh, wow. So you can see it's, it's already running quite nicely there. Beautiful. Good girl. You ready? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Nowadays, everyone talks about protein shakes and vitamin boosters and all sorts of superfoods. In Lammy's life, nothing will be more important than these few meals in this injection. So I know that just looks like blood right now, but once it settles out, we're going to be left with blood cells down the bottom, and a bit we want will be at the top. Yes. So we're going to suck that out, and it's almost like nature's own vaccination. It'll go in there and make the absolute world of difference to little Lammy. We've got <laughs> someone else who wants to donate blood. Our donation hours have actually closed. Come back oh. tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously the sheep around here are very kind-hearted and very generous because they're now queuing up to donate blood to Lammy. They sense a cause, they sense a lamb in need and they want to help out. <laughs> Okay, Sam. Hey, buddy. At SASH, Lisa is hoping X-rays will provide her with the answers to Sam's sudden loss of mobility. I feel so sorry for Sam right now. I look at his eyes and he's got this terrified look. For Lisa, this has now become a diagnosis of exclusion. First, she needs to X-ray Sam for tumours. Good boy. He's weak, he just feels funny and he doesn't know why and that must be frightening. Wait there Sam, good boy. Good boy. His chest all looks pretty normal, there's no obvious tumours. I'm happy that everything there looks pretty good so we've ruled out a whole lot of diseases by doing this and I think the next step is let's give him the Ticanti serum. Despite giving Sam the tick serum as a precaution, okay, Sam. Lisa is becoming more and more convinced that a motor neuron disease is the cause of Sam's paralysis. Animals with polyridiculoneuritis will end up completely paralysed. Some of them won't be able to lift their head. Worst case scenario, they can't breathe properly and they have to be on a ventilator. I just hope that doesn't happen to Sam. Good boy. You can see it's separated now. Yep. So the blood cells have gone to the bottom and this clear stuff up the top is what we need. There's plenty there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. In the Barossa Valley, Chris is about to give Lammy her supercharged plasma transfusion. <coughs> the orphan lamb has been raised by Zoe the Dalmatian, but is vulnerable to infections because she missed out on the antibodies in her mother's milk. So that's how much we need. Yes. You can see it's nice and clear. Yes. And we go straight into Lammy. It's going to make you just like the other lambs. It's like a life injection. This injection is something pretty special. It's like a wonder drug. What it'll do to Lammy's immune system is give it this immediate boost. She'll feel so much better, but importantly, she'll be able to fend off any nasty viruses or infections that come along. All right, that's all done. You were very good. You were very good. Okay. So that's extra protection, really. 
Thank you, Dr. Chris. That's all right. I mean, it, it should serve as some sort of insurance policy. Okay. And she had no insurance sick. policy before. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, you were so good. I think we need some sort of reward for you, don't we? Huh? Look what I've got. <laughs> that <laughs> might just do it. Do you like bottles? Are you in any way interested in, in bottles? Are they something that you're at least sort of Sorry. half <laughs> partial to? Oh, my God. <laughs> The thing that's nagging on my mind right now is that I can make Lammy as healthy as possible for the next few months, but ultimately she needs to be a sheep and she can't do that unless the rest of the flock accepts her. We need to teach Lammy that she is a sheep because if she doesn't think she's a sheep, she's never going to hang out with them and never going to have a normal life after that. No. Okay, so I do have a couple of things in mind. What is that? You're about to find out. Okay. Come on, buddy. Yesterday, Tim removed a male funnel web spider from inside a family home. Now the real work for this spider begins. First trick's catching them, but it's another thing milking. There's a good boy. It's nothing like milking a cow. <laughs> we actually want him aggressive at this point. We need to tease him gently. We need him to stand up, rear up like that aggressively. And there we go. Two droplets of venom. One, two, there it is. It can take up to a thousand milkings to make one ampule of antivenom. When you're bitten by a funnel web spider, you know about it. Before the venom even kicks in, their fangs are half a centimetre long and they thrust them into your flesh and you'll know, I've been bitten. Have a look at a female. They are scared. Whoa, look at that. Tim now needs to milk the female. Female's almost twice the size. Look at that. She's like some kind of kung fu funnel web. Look at these two spiders. Both of them are just there, fangs reared at me. You know, I'm saying, it's all right, guys. I'm finished. Flush it out. Our biggest problem with the funnel web program is access to funnel webs. We need community support. We need people to tell us, I have a funnel web. We collect those spiders, milk them, save lives. I've got a little reward for you. That is one hungry spider. Come on, guys. Come on. In the Barossa Valley, Chris has come up with an unusual plan to help five-week-old Lammy. Come on. Come on. Lammy's spending so much time around Zoe, sleeping next to her and being licked by her that she smells more like a dog than she does a sheep. If we were to put her out with the flock of sheep right now, they'd smell her straight away and go, no, she's an imposter, and they could hurt her. There we go. See? That's easy, isn't it? So the most important thing right now is we take away that doggy smell and replace it with something they're going to find a little bit more acceptable. <laughs> hey, little one. I think we need you. Okay with that? Okay. Yeah. So the plan is we're gonna put a little cloth inside the nappy. Put the nappy on with the tail poking through, of course. And it's gonna soak up any little spills that you will probably have. The thing about lamb wee is that it's the essence of sheep. So when I take that cloth, and put it on Lammy, then Lammy's gonna smell more like a sheep than like Zoe. Okay, ready? Here you go. You don't look silly. I'm pretty sure that when Julie walks into the paddock and sees one of her lambs looking like a toddler, she might be surprised. <laughs> Ashley, Lauren and their grandmother Barbara are back at Sash after receiving bad news about Sam. They called us this morning and told him that he's actually gotten worse today. They might have to put him on a ventilator, which is really scary. Lisa is now almost certain Sam is suffering from a motor neurone disease that is slowly paralysing him. But there are no tests that can confirm the diagnosis. 
Sam has been barking or trying to bark, but his bark is very weak, it's very soft, it's husky. And to me that indicates that he's got some paralysis of his voice box. We see it with polyradiconeuritis. It's just a sign to me that he's got a disease all over his body. Hi. Hi. Come through. Who's that? Hey, Look at the tail. It was so sweet today. The girls came back in for a visit. Sam is wagging his tail, licking them all over. So happy to see his family. Unfortunately, he can't go home just yet, but he's loving all the cuddles. See how his nose falls down? Oh, yeah. So a normal dog should be able to hold their head up like that. So he, even going to the side, he falls. It's just heartbreaking for them. They, they really know that things are a lot worse than they were yesterday. Last night, actually, I kept hearing the sound of his collar, thinking he was there and he wasn't. We just want him to get better. Ready for him to be popped back to bed? Yeah. reassured them that it's the best thing they can do. At least we can watch him. If he gets worse, we can intervene straight away. Good boy, Sam. If Sam does have polyradiculoneuritis, there's no specific treatment. We can't do anything for him other than the tincture of time and hope like hell that he doesn't get worse. A bit of a surprise for you. Come with me. These are your sheep, right? I recognise them, yes. There's now a difference with one of your sheep. In the Barossa Valley, it's time for Chris to reveal the second part of his lamby strategy. He's hoping he's found a way for the orphan lamb to fit in with her flock. She's been spending too much time with Zoe, her surrogate Dalmatian mother. Oh, you're kidding me. It's got a nappy on. Yeah, it's got a nappy on it. What were you thinking? I'm looking at this lamb. It's got to be some sort of joke. The wee's been collected into a little towel. That towel then has essence to sheep, eau de sheep, all over it. The thing about sheep is they go as much on looks as they do on smell. And even though Lammy is a lamb, she's going to smell like a dog. And that has to change. So now we'll get the nappy off and take that cloth and give Lammy a little bit of Perfume. Hmm. Special perfume. Okay. All right. I'm open to any unusual idea that Chris has got, even if it means Lammy wearing an unusual perfume. There we go. Gently does it. All right, so take the nappy off. So this now becomes <laughs> Lammy's new perfume. You test it. I'm all right. I'm all right with mine. There you go, the one. Thank you, by the way. By dabbing on that smell of lamb urine, she's instantly going to start smelling like a sheep. With this lamb urine, what we do is just dab it on her shoulders, on her back there, and I hate to say it, on her face as well, on her ears. So now we've got Lammy smelling more like a sheep. Her training isn't over. She needs the final step, which is her learning to essentially be a sheep and be accepted by the rest of the flock. They've been looking at her, hanging around Zoe and wondering what's going on there. So the way we introduce her to the flock is very gently because if we rush it, they could actually either try to charge her. Or hurt her. Or hurt her. Yes. Because they see her as being as much a dog as they do a sheep. <laughs> Sorry, Lammy. See ya. We're not going to get Lammy accepted into this flock today. It's going to be something that's going to take a number of weeks. But if Julie can just put Lammy into that little pen for an hour every day, they'll get to know each other, become more familiar. So when Lammy eventually goes out to the paddock with them, there'll be no problem at all. Lammy's going to act like she wants to get out there and be a sheep tomorrow. Mm. You know, but you have to pull it back mm. and just do it very gently. All right. The great thing about these solutions is that whilst it's allowing Lammy to go back with a flock of sheep, it's not ending the relationship with Zoe. Their lives will be separate, but not too far apart. I think it's very special that Dr Chris, the Bondi vet's come to visit me in the Brossa Valley, and I'm really happy that he's made the effort, and I think it, we've all learned a lot from it. You can't go home without a glass of red. Thank you for coming. I thought you'd never ask. 
Thank you. Cheers. Sam is showing great signs of recovery from the paralysis that attacked his body. The condition we think Sammy has polyridiculoneuritis usually takes a few days to start and then they can deteriorate over about seven to ten days. They end up getting better on their own and it can take up to six weeks to make a full recovery and sometimes even longer. Good boy, Sammy! Sam has never been apart from his family for more than a day. Ashley, Lauren and Linda are now waiting in reception and are eager to get him home. You're gonna go home, hey? Get you home. Come on. Yay! 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 Oh my gosh, Yay! look how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much better. He's like one of the family. So happy that he's coming home now. Yes. Yeah. I miss you, little guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I miss you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. My new best friend. <laughs> well, it's looking good. Look at that leg. How good is your leg? You're running. Four weeks later, more good news. This time at the Australian Reptile Park, where baby Lewis is back in action with his sister Luna. The cast come off a week ago and from the moment it come off, he was strong. He, his leg has shown no signs of tenderness or anything. He, he's using it like a normal devil. He's running, jumping, fighting with his sister, everything we could have hoped for. <coughs> that leg looks good, buddy. That leg looks good. Your sister won't be able to bash you anymore, mate. Your leg's all better. You're all strong again. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.